Hey there, America. Buckle up, because we're diving into the wacky world of the Federal Reserve, also known as the Fed, the guys who control our money. Now, I know what you're thinking. The Fed? Really? That sounds about as thrilling as watching grass grow. But hold on, because this institution has a huge impact on our daily lives, whether we realize it or not. Yeah, it sounds about as exciting as watching paint dry, but trust me, this stuff affects all of us. Imagine this. Every time you sip your morning coffee, swipe your credit card, or even think about buying a new car, the Fed's decisions are at play. They influence interest rates, which in turn affect how much you pay for loans and mortgages. From the price of your morning coffee to whether you can afford that new car, or, you know, a used bicycle. And it's not just about big purchases. The Fed's policies can even impact your job security and the overall health of the economy. So, why was the Fed created? Picture this, it's 1913, and the US economy is like a roller coaster with no brakes. The financial system was chaotic, with banks failing and people losing their savings. It was a time of great uncertainty and fear. Banks are collapsing left and right, people are panicking, and the money system is a mess. The country needed a solution, a way to bring stability and confidence back to the financial system. Enter the Federal Reserve Act, a bold move to create a central bank that would stabilize the financial system and prevent future economic meltdowns. This act was a game changer, setting up a system that could manage the money supply and act as a lender of last resort to banks in trouble. Think of it as a financial superhero, here to save the day, most of the time. The Fed's job is to keep the economy running smoothly, balancing the need for growth with the need to keep inflation in check. But like any superhero, the Fed has its fair share of critics and controversies. Some people think it has too much power, making decisions that can affect millions without enough oversight. Others argue that it's not doing enough to address issues like unemployment and economic inequality. Some argue it has too much power, while others say it's not doing enough. The debate over the Fed's role and effectiveness is ongoing, with passionate arguments on both sides. Either way, there's no denying the Fed's influence on our lives. From setting interest rates to regulating banks, its decisions ripple through the economy, affecting everything from the stock market to the prices we pay for goods and services. So let's break down this financial behemoth and see what it's all about, shall we? We'll explore how it works, its history, and the key players who make the big decisions. By the end of this wild ride, you'll have a better understanding of the Fed and why it matters to you. Ready? Let's dive in. Here's where things get a little weird. The Federal Reserve, often simply called the Fed, is a unique entity in the world of finance and governance. The Fed is a strange hybrid, a blend of public authority and private enterprise, it's a bit like a chameleon, adapting to different roles depending on the situation. Imagine a platypus wearing a top hat and monocle confusing yet weirdly intriguing. This odd combination makes the Fed both fascinating and complex. On one hand, it's a government agency created by Congress. This means it has a public mandate to serve the interests of the American people. The Fed is responsible for setting monetary policy, which basically means controlling the money supply and interest rates. This is no small task, as these decisions impact every aspect of the economy. This gives them enormous power over the economy, as they can influence things like inflation, unemployment, and economic growth. Their decisions can make the difference between economic stability and turmoil. Think of them as the conductors of the economic orchestra, trying to keep everyone playing in tune. They must ensure that the economy runs smoothly, balancing various factors to maintain harmony. But here's the twist. The Fed is also made up of 12 privately owned regional banks scattered across the country. These regional banks play a crucial role in the Fed's operations. These banks are owned by member banks, commercial banks that are part of the Federal Reserve System. This private ownership adds another layer of complexity to the Fed's structure. This private ownership element has fueled conspiracy theories and sparked debates about accountability and transparency. People often wonder who really pulls the strings behind the scenes. So who really controls the Fed? It's complicated. The Fed's structure is designed to balance public and private interests, making it a unique institution. The Fed operates independently of the government, 
meaning it doesn't answer directly to the president or Congress. This independence is crucial for making unbiased economic decisions, but it's not a free-for-all either. The Fed must operate within the framework of laws and regulations set by Congress. The Fed is subject to congressional oversight, and its actions are constantly scrutinized by economists, politicians, and the public. This ensures a level of accountability and transparency. It's a delicate balancing act, folks. The Fed must navigate the fine line between public service and private interests, all while maintaining economic stability. This intricate dance is what makes the Fed both powerful and enigmatic. Over the years, the Fed has played a pivotal role in shaping the U.S. economy. From the Great Depression to the 2008 financial crisis, its actions have had far-reaching consequences. As we look to the future, the Fed will continue to evolve, adapting to new economic challenges and technological advancements. Its unique structure will remain a topic of fascination and debate. Ultimately, the Fed's goal is to serve the public interest, ensuring a stable and prosperous economy for all. By understanding its complex nature, we can better appreciate the vital role it plays in our financial system. So the next time you hear about the Fed, remember that it's more than just a faceless institution. It's a dynamic entity, balancing public power and private partnerships to steer the economy through both calm and stormy waters. At the helm of this financial ship is the Board of Governors, a group of seven members appointed by the President and confirmed by the Senate. This process ensures that only the most qualified individuals with a deep understanding of economics and finance are chosen to guide the nation's monetary policy. These are the big cheeses, the head honchos, the folks who call the shots on monetary policy. They are the ones who make the critical decisions that affect the entire economy from setting interest rates to regulating banks. Each governor serves a 14-year term, which is longer than a Supreme Court justice. This extended term is designed to provide stability and continuity in the nation's monetary policy, allowing governors to make long-term decisions without the pressure of short-term political cycles. This is designed to insulate them from political pressure and ensure continuity in monetary policy. By having such long terms, governors can focus on what's best for the economy rather than what's politically expedient. But don't worry, they're not ruling for life. Their terms are staggered. So there's always a mix of experience and fresh perspectives on the board. New governors are appointed every two years, so there's always fresh blood, or at least fresh ink on their economics degrees coming in. This regular infusion of new members helps to keep the board dynamic and responsive to new economic challenges. Leading the pack are the chair and vice chair, appointed by the president to four-year terms. These positions are crucial as they set the tone for the entire board and often represent the Fed in public forums. These two are the public faces of the Fed, the ones who give the press conferences and testify before Congress and probably get blamed for everything that goes wrong with the economy. They are the ones who communicate the Fed's policies and decisions to the public and lawmakers, making them some of the most visible figures in the financial world. Section 4. Regional Players, the 12 Banks of the Fed. Now let's talk about those 12 regional banks we mentioned earlier. These aren't your average banks with drive through ATMs and free toasters. They're like the regional offices of the Fed, each responsible for a specific geographic area of the United States. These banks play a crucial role in implementing monetary policy. They provide financial services to banks and the U.S. government, acting as a bank for banks. They also conduct economic research, collecting data on their respective regions to help the Fed make informed decisions about monetary policy. Each regional bank is overseen by a board of directors made up of bankers, business leaders, and community representatives. This ensures that the Fed is in touch with the needs of different regions and industries across the country. Section 5. The FOMC where the interest rate magic happens. But the real action happens at the Federal Open Market Committee, or FOMC. This is where the Fed's monetary policy decisions are made, like setting the federal funds rate, the interest rate that banks charge each other for overnight loans. The FOMC is made up of the seven members of the Board of Governors, plus five presidents of the regional Federal Reserve Banks. The New York Fed president always gets a seat at the table, 
while the other four spots rotate among the remaining regional bank presidents. The FOMC meets eight times a year, and these meetings are closely watched by investors, businesses, and anyone who cares about the economy. Why? Because the FOMC's decisions on interest rates can have a ripple effect throughout the financial system, affecting everything from mortgage rates to stock prices. During these meetings, the FOMC members review economic data, analyze trends, and debate the best course of action for monetary policy. They're like economic detectives, trying to solve the mystery of how to keep the economy on track.